Io is the third largest moon of Jupiter and fourth largest in the solar system. It has a diameter of 3,600 kilometers, which is around 150 kilometers more than the diameter of the moon. Diameter of Earth is 12,750 kilometers, which is 3.5 times the length of Io's diameter. Considering the number of spherical moons in the solar system, being the fourth largest is pretty good. Not only is Io big, but it is also the most volcanically active object in the solar system, with 150 volcanoes confirmed to be active, but likely the total number of active volcanoes is around 400. Some volcanoes on Io even produce plumes that can go up to 500 kilometers above the surface. Those plumes are longer than the whole diameter of the moon Mimas, which is a small spherical moon of Saturn. Io is so geologically active that there are significant surface changes occurring over the time span of a couple of years. Those surface changes can even be seen from space. This constant activity on Io is there because of tidal heating. As the gravity of Jupiter, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto are pulling on Io, that also creates friction in the interior and consequently heat as a result of friction. So it is pretty clear that Io is a very interesting moon, considering how active the whole place is. So what would landing on it be like? with humans. Well, obviously, in order to land on Io with humans, humans would first need to get to it. Io at its closest to Earth is 628 million kilometers away, which is 4.2 times longer than the distance between the Earth and the Sun, and that is around 1,600 times longer than the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Considering that there are probes such as Voyager 1 and 2, which were able to reach Jupiter within around 600 days, that implies that it is very much in the realm of possibility that we could create a spacecraft that could sustain the existence of a couple of humans for a year and a half. Humans inside that ship could even be put in a state of hibernation with therapeutic hypothermia. They could also through IV get everything that their body needs in order to survive the trip. Now in total if we say that they needed 550 days to reach Io and they would only spend a couple of days on Io, then they would also need at least more than 550 days to go back to Earth, because at that point, Earth would be farther away from Jupiter. So in total, they would likely spend around 3 to 4 years in space, which could potentially be very damaging to their bodies because of no strong gravitational pull that our bodies are used to. Still, considering that the longest single stay in space was 437 days by Valery Polyakov and he came back without too many problems, and is still currently alive at 78 years old, we can be pretty sure that despite the fact that the no gravity environment is going to be very unhealthy, it's likely not going to kill them before they get back here. If that is not the case, then some means of simulating gravity on the spaceship could be implemented in order to prevent fatal health problems. The spacecraft would also need to protect them from the radiation present in space that could penetrate through the walls of the spacecraft if the walls do not have the proper materials to block it. There are currently some good ideas as to what materials could be used to protect well from that radiation in space. Eventually, when they reach Io and land on it, the radiation levels would become insanely high. Io's surface averages 36,000 millisieverts a day, which is around 51,000 times more than the radiation on the surface of Mars and around 3.6 million times more than the average daily surface radiation of Earth. Pioneer 10, the first probe to reach Jupiter, even failed at imaging the surface of Io. The images were lost because of such a high level of radiation. Without any serious protection from this insane amount of radiation, all of the humans on the surface of Io would certainly be dead shortly after their arrival. Because of that, they would need to have very special spacesuits that would be able to protect them from the insane amounts of radiation. Currently, there are no such spacesuits, but it is possible that they could be created in the future. Now, let's say that they do have those spacesuits which can provide good protection and take a look at what they would be able to see and experience. So, looking at this map of Io, it is pretty clear that the surface is very colorful. Not only that, but there are plenty of very interesting, odd surface features that are not present on most celestial objects. It has many mountains, lava flows, lava lakes, and large areas with smooth terrain. The surface generally lacks impact craters, unlike the vast majority of moons, which is because of frequent volcanic activity. Craters are erased by the volcanic materials that are constantly spewed. They bury the traces of impact craters. That also makes it harder to determine its age 
as the density of impact craters indicates the age of a celestial object. The areas that would not be safe to explore are the ones with a high density of volcanoes. Although seeing a volcano spew material hundreds of kilometers into the air would be an amazing sight to see, it is also a very dangerous one. Because of that, the area that they would want to land on if they want to be significantly safer is the one with lots of mountains, in order to minimize the chances of being near an eruption. Surprisingly, these mountains on Io are not created by volcanoes. They are tectonic structures, and usually on Io, the areas with lots of mountains do not have a high volcano density, and there are plenty of mountains. The average peak height of a mountain range is 6 kilometers, and the average length is about 150 kilometers. The tallest mountain on Io is also one of the tallest in the solar system. That's Bosali Montes. It is 17 kilometers tall at its highest point, taller than any mountain on Earth by a lot. It is also technically a mountain range hundreds of kilometers long. It would be very interesting to land near this mountain, in this location, near a steep cliff that it has. If they did, when they would take a step onto the surface, they would notice a smooth yellowish and reddish terrain that is composed mostly of sulfur, as most of the smooth surface of Io is. But as they would look far into the distance, they would immediately see Bosali Montes and its stunning 15 kilometer tall cliff. The look of the terrain on the mountain would be noticeably different even from afar to the one they would be standing on. It would have a very rugged look, that is because these mountains on Io, unlike the general surface, are composed of silicate rock, not just sulfur. We know that they are not composed of just sulfur because sulfur alone is not able to support these enormously tall and big structures. While moving about, they would likely not feel as heavy as they do on Earth, since the surface gravity of Io is around 1.8 meters per second square, which is roughly 5.5 times less than the gravity of Earth, unless their spacesuits weigh around 4 times more than their body weight. Then that would make them feel just as heavy as they normally do on Earth. And it's possible that the suit could be 4 times heavier than their body weight, considering that it would need to protect them from insanely high levels of radiation. That gravity of Io also tells us that it is the densest Jovian moon out of all the major ones. Anyways, if they somehow also managed to land on the highest point on Bosali Montes, the view from there would be stunning. They would be able to see a huge portion of the mountain range and its complexities in great detail. As they would look further on one side, they would see a large flat yellowish and reddish smooth area that they were previously standing on. In that direction of the smooth terrain, there is a very powerful volcano named Pele. Bosali Montes is very close to this volcano that produced this huge red ring. While looking in the opposite direction of the smooth terrain, a generally yellowish, rugged, but somewhat flat terrain would appear. Many big slopes would also be apparent. Now, if they decided to go further with exploring the mountains of Io, they would find plenty of very oddly shaped mountains that are very unlike what we have on Earth. A really interesting mountain to be near at is Hiiaka Montes. If those humans were in this location, and if they were viewing these two blocks, they would see huge 3 kilometer tall walls, hundreds of kilometers long. They would appear as gigantic fortresses. If they were to go on the top of this flattened elevated layer, they would see a rugged surface. From their position, it would appear as if there are many elongated tiny hills. While standing near the edge of this wall, they would get a great view of the oddly colored depression below them. And they would spot an 11 kilometer tall peak that is very sharp. There is a huge number of these very interesting mountains that they could explore. But now let's move on to other features that could be explored. On Io, there are plenty of lava lakes and features where lava flows. But where there are these features, the density of volcanoes is also higher which is why exploring them would be generally unsafe, although very interesting. In this infrared image, we can see thermal emissions from the lava lakes of a volcano Pele that was previously mentioned. These are actually volcanic and is usually where there are vents which are connected to the magma reservoirs below the surface. They just don't have the typical dome protrusion that is often associated with volcanoes. One such volcano lake that would be very interesting to visit is Tupan Patera. As the humans would be standing near it, they would notice immediately just how enormous it is, as it would engulf the entire view of the surface in front of them. That is because it is 75 kilometers in diameter, and the edge they would be on is 900 meters above the depression below them. As they would look into the distance and into the surface below them, 
they would see huge patterns of dark black, green, red and yellow materials. Interestingly, it is only the dark material that is actually warm silicate lava. And they would see pretty clearly how the red material, which has condensed from sulfur gas after escaping from volcanic vents, is mixing with the warm lava and creating these green patches as a result. And they would also see a huge solid yellow patch, which is a mix of sulfurous compounds. Now, Tupin Patera is not the largest lava lake on Io. That is Lake Patera, which is 200 kilometers in diameter. That is 2.5 times longer than Tupin Patera. Humans standing on the edge of it would almost see no end to this huge lake. While looking at its floor, they would see a lot of lava covering the floor of the depression. And in the center of the lake, they would see a huge, solid, island-like feature. But lava does not only occur in the form of a lake within volcanic depressions with steep walls and a flat floor. Lava flow-like eruptions can happen in these pterapid that have vents on the floor. But that can also happen to huge plain fields and they can be carved by lava when it erupts from the vents around the patera or the huge cracks through which lava can pass. The result of that flow eruption happening can be seen with Kulan Patera, which has many long lava flows over a plain. There is an enormous number of these lava flows all over Io, and a lot of lava flows are currently active and can over a couple of years cover large surface areas hundreds of kilometers long, just like Kulan Patera. Now, most of lava on Io is basalt, just like most lava on Earth. It is a type of rock, when in liquid form, that is lava, it has low viscosity. That means that it is easily deformed, or it's not very thick. That allows it to spread very quickly over a large surface area before cooling and solidifying. That is also what makes lava flows on Io to be tens or hundreds of kilometers long. Now, while exploring this area of Kulan Patera, humans would see a huge variety of colors over a relatively rugged surface area that was carved by lava. And they would also get to exactly determine with their instruments as to what the composition of each small differently colored region is. The fact that there are so many colors is proof that there is a huge variety of compounds on it. The chemical composition would be interesting to study. Although currently we know that on regions where there is mostly yellow to greenish yellowish, that would be a place with sulfur. And such regions are usually smooth. The places where there is a lot of white are mostly covered by sulfur dioxide. Now those flow eruptions that happen on places such as Kulan are usually steady and constant. The eruptions last for years or even decades. But other types of lava eruptions that can be seen on Io are explosive and last for weeks. Two such explosive lava fountains occurred in the Tvashtar Pateri region, where 25 km long and 1 km tall lava fountain appeared. Not only that, but the Tvashtar volcano is also where a huge 330 km tall plume was detected. That is a pellet-type plume that erupts sulfur and sulfur dioxide at a speed of around 1 km a second, about the speed of a shot bullet. That speed is what allows it to reach such heights. That material that was shot in the air forms an umbrella look, and when it falls onto the surface, it creates a ring around the center of where the plume eruption happened. There are a lot of these ring formations on Io because of that. There are also other weaker plumes that shoot dust into the air. These are called Prometheus-type plumes. They shoot dust at half the speed of pellet-type plumes, but they still manage to get to around 100 kilometers above the surface. Anyways, as the humans would be exploring the surface features on Io, eventually they would inevitably get to be on the side of Io where Jupiter is visible. As they would look into the distance, Jupiter would appear to be enormous, many times larger compared to how the moon appears from Earth. The distance from the center of Jupiter to Io is about 420,000 kilometers, while the distance from the top of visible layer of Jupiter to Io is about 350,000 kilometers, which is about the same distance that the moon orbits the Earth. But of course, Jupiter is much larger, with a diameter that is 40 times longer than the diameter of the Moon and 11.5 times longer than the diameter of Earth, which is exactly why Jupiter would dominate the sky so much on Io. And if they were to stay on the same spot from which Jupiter is visible until they complete a full orbit around Jupiter, which is 42 hours, they wouldn't see it move in the sky at all. That is because Io is tidally locked, meaning it needs the same amount of time to rotate around its axis as it does to complete a full orbit around Jupiter. So one side of Io is always facing Jupiter, while the other one is always facing away from Jupiter. But the experience of being for 21 hours under daylight and 21 in the night would be an interesting one, especially because during every 42-hour orbital period, 
for about two hours, it always happens that Io passes through Jupiter's shadow. Meaning while they would be standing there on the side that faces Jupiter, as they would be looking up into the sky, Jupiter would be getting in front of the Sun. And suddenly, it would become very dark, as Jupiter would completely block the view of the Sun. And the temperature would suddenly significantly drop. But because they would have such special spacesuits, they wouldn't notice the temperature difference. The atmospheric pressure would also drop, but that wouldn't be noticeable as well at all. Where the temperature is higher, the atmosphere is denser on Io. Most of the atmosphere of Io is there because of sunlight-driven sublimation of sulfur dioxide, which is why 90% of the atmosphere is sulfur dioxide. Because of that, the distance of the sun to Io is influencing the atmospheric pressure. During the night time, and when there is no sunlight when Io is in Jupiter's shadow, as the temperature on Io drops, the atmosphere also practically disappears as most of the gas sulfur dioxide is frozen at the temperatures that occur when there is no sunlight on Io. Still, even if the humans happen to be in the region where the atmosphere is unusually dense, the atmosphere simply wouldn't be apparent at all, because it would still be around 300 million times weaker than the atmosphere of Earth. It is a very thin atmosphere. So clearly, experiencing Io on its surface in first person would be fun. It has many amazing surface features that would look stunning up close. Currently, we are not capable of visiting Io with humans safely. But it is still in the realm of something that is achievable if a lot of money and work is put into it.